Eso. Y a los pececitos, ¿para qué los pececitos? A ver, para, para ellos, nadar, para nadar. nadar. Porque ellos viven en el agua, ¿cierto? Las erupciones volcánicas no nos tomarán desprevenidos. So, there are many health risks associated volcanic, with volcanic eruptions. They can be classified in two groups. One as a public health problem, which are associated with normal, large population displacement and temporary shelters. Problem for water, problem of food, problem of control of communicable diseases, mental health, etc. This is very well known by the health services. It's common to any type of disaster situations. Following a volcanic eruptions, you don't know how long people will stay displaced. It may be a few months, it may be five years or more. You have a second type of a problem, which is an increase in demand for medical attentions, consultations and medical attentions. This is caused by the ashes, by uh, the irritations, uh, by uh, any small problems, which is overwhelming the capacity of the health services, is scaring the public and the politicians, and is practically consuming all your time. The third one is a group of the two real killers of the uh, volcanic eruption. One is a pyroclastic flow, and the second is a mud flow. And we have seen how it can kill. But in Latin America, those two killers together in the past century have been responsible for 99% of the deaths. And uh, we spend most of our time attending what is not really the major public health risk. And what we would like now is to see the attention, the planning, the preparedness and the response to gear for the real killers. I think the other thing is that from the very beginning of this disaster, I think we should need to understand that volcanic disasters are not like other disasters, short-lived. Volcanic disasters tend to drag on for a long time. And from the first sign of any activity, the lesson we've learned is that you've got to dig in and you've got to get your infrastructure firmed up and you've got to have everything right from the beginning because you may have a long haul. But we are not helpless. We can act now. We can plan and be prepared in case of volcanic emergencies. And we can look into ways to prevent problems from happening before eruptions even occur. If we wait for the first tremors or smoke, it will be too late. As leaders in the health sector, there are many things that we can do. Begin by gathering vital information about areas in your country that have active or dormant volcanoes. There are places near dormant volcanoes where people live. I have lived there even for centuries. They have to realize that there is a high risk to live in those areas because evil volcano awakes, especially if it's got a snow-capped top where the heat can produce much light like the one in Armero. These people have to be aware that in case it becomes active again, they will have to evacuate the zone rather quickly to places with a higher ground where they can save themselves. Otherwise, they are going to perish, as it has happened in previous emergencies. Knowing where the potential trouble spots are gives you the advantage of planning for possible disasters. Talk with local civil defense or emergency committee members about the status and potential for activity of nearby volcanoes. Ask volcanologists about local histories of eruptions and whether hazard maps exist. Find out if settlements have been rebuilt in the path of former mudflows or glowing avalanches. 
and identify where your most at risk populations are located. At Montserrat, a hazard map had been published a few years before the eruption started in 1995. It turned out to be an accurate forecast of events, but it was ignored when it first came out. As a result, nothing was done in advance to protect the infrastructure of the island. A new hospital in Plymouth had to be abandoned almost immediately after it was opened. When Plymouth was evacuated, most of the essential infrastructure of the island was abandoned. Working with scientists, local leaders, and disaster professionals, develop plans for what would be done in case of the most foreseeable eruption and the worst case scenario. When you're planning, don't forget to consider that ashfall, sometimes lasting for many hours, can block all roads and reduce visibility for days until it rains and clears the air of ash. All water and electricity can stop. There may be radio and telecommunications blackouts. This also affects satellite communications. The assets you plan for will most likely not be available. Have contingency plans for the most anticipated personnel and supply needs. Even with the best of plans, many things will go wrong. You will have to be flexible when parts of your plan may not work well. The needs of the island have changed and it's vital to have a, a, a somewhat flexible approach to this and it's quite clear that um, you know, the priorities of the people in the government of Montserrat have changed, necessarily so. There is no way that anyone could have predicted uh, two years ago where we, where we would be today. The most important thing to remember is that keeping populations away from the areas around volcanoes is the best way to avoid mass casualties. Anything you can do to work with planning officials and convince them not to allow communities and health facilities to grow near volcanoes will help prevent deaths and injuries and save governments millions in later costs. When settlements are already located near a volcano, showing any signs of new activity, it is clear that early evacuation of populations away from exposed areas is the best plan. Every area should have a health sector contingency plan. This plan should be designed by everyone involved in responding to a volcanic crisis. It must include not only medical treatment plans, but also activities such as creating temporary sites for accepting evacuees. Since there are already many communities established in volcanic areas, you can't ignore the possibility of mass evacuations. In reality, people do not relocate easily. Try to provide strong, factual information about the hazards they're facing and what's being done to help them. Good public information and compassion will be more effective in moving populations than law enforcement alone. The most vulnerable of populations, the elderly, the mentally and physically ill, are often the hardest to deal with in an evacuation. You must plan ahead with local health groups, organizing ways to help those most at risk get out of dangerous areas quickly. But you must also provide services that will help them adapt to their new surroundings, especially if they're placed in temporary shelters. In the chaotic time after a volcanic eruption, many workers and people living in areas around the site will need special information or protective gear. You'll need to advise people with respiratory problems to stay indoors as much as possible or to wear lightweight fine particle masks. Emergency workers and those working to remove ash from streets and roofs will also need masks and protective eyewear. In case of heavy ash fall, high efficiency lightweight masks should be distributed to everyone in the affected area, with outside workers also getting hard hats where there is a risk of volcanic fallout. Not only is ash a potential hazard, but toxic gases, although generally in harmless concentrations, can cause serious air pollution. The odor can be horrible and frightening to those who don't know it isn't poisonous at this concentration. Many will seek medical help because of fear. By carefully and consistently monitoring air and water quality at fixed sites in public locations, 
you should be able to solve any potential problems and keep the public informed about safety issues. Health damage and needs assessment and epidemiological surveillance is vital for health administrators. Keeping track of reports from hospitals and emergency rooms, other health centers and shelters will let you know what types of injuries and illnesses your population is facing and therefore give you the chance to target services and resources where they're most needed. We must also plan for mental health issues, including how to address the stresses of relocation and loss as well as dealing with highly at-risk populations. Evacuees are likely to suffer from depression and other mental disorders. Be ready to confront these by offering support services on site and in community clinics. Medical personnel and disaster workers may also need support to get through this highly emotional and draining time. Your contingency plan should include ongoing training programs for everyone involved with mass casualty management, stress management, first responders, and incident command systems. Having well-trained staff members who know what to expect is important for keeping everyone safe and calm during the real crisis. In Manshat, people have seen personal fortunes disappear. They've seen all their dreams, all they've worked for disappear. Um, so from the health staff point of view, people have been affected personally in that they've lost everything they have. I've personally lost everything I've had. And in addition to that, your work environment is now much less than desirable. So it's really a challenge to remain here under these circumstances. Environmental health issues, such as decent water quality and supply, food sanitation, vector control, sewage and solid waste disposal, and proper disposal of the dead are also part of our responsibilities. In your plan, include any equipment that may be needed to monitor air and water quality and survey respiratory diseases among the affected population. Finally, medical attention is a vital part of health sector contingency plans. This includes detailed search and rescue plans, mass casualty plans with attention to providing temporary morgues and emergency field stations, triage instructions, and plans for transporting the injured to hospitals and emergency clinics. Every Minister of Health and every Department of Health should have uh, risk analysis. Most important is if they have a volcanic active in the area. This uh, analysis has to include all the area. This is important because if they don't have the risk analysis, the response for the injured people could be not the best. There are tremendous needs to be met during a volcanic crisis. With a solid health sector contingency plan, you'll be ready for budget concerns, personnel training and assignments, evacuations, and plans for providing safe water. Test your plan. Practice it with medical staff. Make sure they feel comfortable and prepared. And be sure to update it periodically to account for changes in personnel and resources. Your input into emergency team planning before, during, and right after an eruption is absolutely essential. Learn who the disaster coordinators are. Find the scientists and political authorities who are the decision makers and let your voice be heard. You should be a key member of any emergency team, collecting useful information for your own plans and defending the health interests of the public. Emergency officials and the mass media need your point of view on the public health implications of any decision being considered that could affect public health. The information you share can alleviate fears, dispel myths about the dangers people are facing, and give them hope about what's being done to lead them back to normal lives. 
Debemos organizar. We must get organized and work with all institutions in our community. First of all, putting aside all differences, we're receiving training in various aspects and sectors such as the educational sector, at the grassroots and at the institutional levels. With this training, we are sure we will live a longer life together with our children, our grandchildren, here in our city of Los Baños. The only way to protect your population, your health services, by being prepared beforehand. To do that, you have to be, have a very clear idea about what is the risk that you're exposed to, what type of volcano that you have, will you be exposed to paraclysic flow, will you be exposed to mud and flowers and debris, will you be exposed to ashes. Those are the three main criteria that the health services has to keep in mind to protect the, the, the facilities and ensure health uh, service delivery to the population afterwards. Volcanoes are part of our world. They continue to create and destroy in a never-ending cycle. We know now that many past human tragedies can be avoided. There is no need for thousands to die ever again if we are better prepared to respond. As public health officials, our job is to make sure our people have vital health services. Working with government decision makers and other agencies, identifying areas at risk, creating a strong health sector contingency plan, and making certain our medical staff, facilities, and supplies are prepared for this immense challenge are the best ways we can keep our people safe and secure and offer them hope for the future. El tema de hoy. Preparedness can represent the difference between living and dying.